Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, I'm going to show you how I increased my personal show rate on my insurance appointments that I worked so hard to sell. Be sure to watch the video all the way through so you can steal what I've done to personally increase my show rate in my life insurance appointments. Welcome to the channel today, guys. I'm Mason Vanmeter. I'm the owner and founder of Running Buddies Academy, where I help insurance agents just like you run up the ladder of success together. So just to give you some context to this video, this is just how I personally increased my show rate for my virtual life insurance appointments. But here's the thing you have to realize, you cannot prevent all no-shows from happening. Someone's gonna have soccer practice, someone's dog's gonna die, and someone's fish is gonna drown. So you can't prevent things like that from happening. So the first thing that I did to increase my show rate was I stopped focusing on product-based training. And I started transitioning to a prospect-based training. And with that, I was able to set a lot more quality appointments instead of some huge quantity with a shit show rate. Me personally, I would rather have five to 10 solid appointments that I know are gonna show up that week compared to booking 20 to 50 like I see some of these other people doing and having like a five to 10% show rate. Or even if it was higher than that, it's still with unqualified candidates who are just there to give you, I need to think about it or something like that. And they're not serious buyers. I want people who are ready to make an informed decision that way they get protected and I get paid. One of the biggest mistakes that I was making was I was rushing off the phone too quick. Low and slow is the name of the game for setting these appointments. You want them engaged and interacting with you and you want to build a relationship with them. And I don't mean a transactional relationship where they already come off the bat feeling like you're trying to sell them something. We as humans over the years have been able to learn how to sniff the salesy people out. We don't want to be sold, but boy, do we love to buy as humans. So stop rushing off the phone because when you just rush to book the appointment, here's what happens. They're going to be here. They specifically said they were going to be here at two o'clock, two o'clock on Thursday. They even got the email. They wrote it down. So one of the first things that I noticed, that helped me increase my show rate was my lockdown. At the end of the call, when I said, okay, see you at six, I wasn't just hanging up. I would give them an additional step. I would add a friction point in the appointment setting process. Now, most people are probably scared because they feel like they're gonna talk themselves out of the appointment, but you can't lose what you didn't have. So spend the time and make sure you're setting quality appointments. And what I mean by lockdown, first thing I would do for that, I would get their email. I would send them a calendar invite and ask them if they got that. Okay, great, hit that yes button to confirm you're going. The calendar will then send them a reminder. The next thing I would do, hey, grab a piece of paper and a pen and let me know when you're ready. I'm not asking them, hey, can you, mind, can you do this or do you mind? No, I would just tell them. There needs to be more telling and less asking. So I would tell them, go grab a piece of paper and a pen so you can write something down for me. I'll wait for you. Just let me know when you're ready. You can say a variety of things. So after telling them to write down what I told them to on the paper, I would go an additional step further in the lockdown process. Do you see any reason why you wouldn't be able to make this appointment short of a nuclear disaster? Because things come up. I've had someone ask me to go to church one night and I forget I had an appointment, but I already made plans with him and I said I would go to church and I have to cancel this because I have to help his family. Like things come up, soccer practice, basketball per tryouts, whatever the case is, people have things that come up. So when you ask that, something that they forgot about because we're so quick to jump into something because of the urgency of the moment, now we can adjust on the phone when that appointment comes up last minute instead of fighting to get them back on the phone a second time just to have them not even answer you. And something funny to throw in, I remember telling someone one day when I was booking an appointment, my lockdown was, now look, Stacy, tomorrow is my birthday. So if I come into work for you on my birthday, you're not gonna stand me up, are you? Another thing that I started doing was giving away free stuff to them before they even got to the appointment, whatever the case was. I started buying gas cards or gift cards, whatever the case is, and I would put their name in a drawing and give it away once a week or once a month, whatever the case was. I would send them free downloads to something if I noticed on their job report it was a machinist. I would send them something related to that because I used to do it. Or if someone was a professional swimmer, they love, sh 
I would send them related stuff for free and just go out of my way to give them something. And why I did that, because there was a study done at a charity event where they would hand out Coca-Colas to people. And the people they gave Coca-Colas to would buy typically twice the amount of raffle tickets compared to people they didn't give a Coke to. Why is that happening? Like, what's the psychology behind that? Well, when I'm given something, I almost immediately feel like I have to return the favor. So by me giving them something, they're more willing to show up and buy because they might feel like, oh, this guy gave me something. Let me return the favor or I owe him. Another thing that you could do that is totally preventable is not messing up on the phone. Stop saying, uh, and yeah, and using very weak language like I think or it might. When you use much more defining terms like I know this or it's going to do this and you're not stuttering and stammering your way through a phone call because you actually practice your script. What I did personally, I studied my script for 25 minutes a day and did obstacle overcomes for the next five. And then I would watch old recordings of myself dialing and use the sandwich method of feedback. Okay, here's what you did right, here's what you did wrong, here's what you're gonna do better next time. So I would use that method of feedback because like every famous or professional sports athlete, they watch game film on themselves. But record yourself, let someone else hear you. Get a fresh set of eyes on an old problem and I promise you will get 10 times better. Or you can trick yourself into it. If you're so convicted in what you do, like if you would book your mother a life insurance appointment, you're probably pretty convicted. So you're gonna say things the right way. And how do you get that conviction bias up that what you're doing matters? You read your testimonials. You read what you're doing that is working. You're getting that self-affirmation, that positive feedback loop. Because most of the scripts aren't the words on the script that does the work for you. It's your tonality. It's how you say it. And the reason I'm talking like this is because I want you to understand that it's very important. One of the simplest things that I did was use automation. I would put their number in my CRM. It would send email and text campaigns, letting them know about the appointments and giving them other free stuff like brochures about Medicare or how to enroll themselves in social security, whatever the case was. I just wanted to give them value. That way they felt like they owed me their time or they wanted to give me something back in return or let alone buy a policy. So I would send a text and an email campaign 24 hours before the appointment, one hour before the appointment, and then five minutes before the appointment. Because the last thing that I wanted to hear or see or deal with was, oh, I forgot about it. And last but not least, five minutes before the appointment, I would call them regardless if it was Zoom or anything. Because once they're on the phone, it's so much easier to just say, hey, click on that link I sent you to get on the Zoom. I just wanted to make sure everything worked properly. And then waiting for them to show up like you saw earlier, because that doesn't work. But anyways, guys, I hope you found this very helpful. I did when I first started selling life insurance. This helped blow my sales out of the water and make me a very high level, high caliber producer in a very short amount of time. I wrote a quarter million dollars of production on my own pen in my first year alone in the life insurance industry with a very high persistency rate. And I wanna help you do the exact same thing. So if you're struggling or even ready to take your life insurance business to the next level, be sure to go to runningbuddies.life. Schedule your free discovery call. If you enjoyed this or found this content valuable, please leave a comment below with your favorite part or your favorite thing that you're going to start implementing in your scripts, in your appointment setting process. Leave a like or a dislike if you disliked it, but those thumbs downs don't look too pretty and they don't even show up anymore. So, And be sure to drop a subscription if you're serious about leveling up your life insurance business. Hope you have a blessed day. Stay strong, stay powerful, stay focused. Love you guys. Have a great day.